Hi my friends, today I'm sharing with you how to make this really cute Easter gift box. It features um, an open top flap and there is a gorgeous decorative panel at the back of the box and down on the base, got this gorgeous DSP here. Pop him inside. When we close up the box on the side, we have got this lovely DSP here on the top and of course on the other side it features an acetate window so that we can see inside the box and i've stamped all the way around the outside of that shape and then i finished off with this really cute easter bunny and happy easter and inside there i have put in one of these gorgeous little bilby easter chocolates that you can get from your local woolworths um, so the box size is to fit um, something that's probably about um, 11 centimetres high by, um, you know, six and a half centimetres wide. So if you can find something that corresponds to that, um, that would be great. You can put something else in there. Otherwise, these bilbies, it's been made for these bilbies. What you're going to need are two sheets of 12 by 12 paper. And because I'm using the um, Happy Forest Friends designer series paper, I've gone with an old olive 12 by 12s. Now, speaking of the Happy Forest Friends, I have already pre-cut, just to save on time with the video, some of the papers that we need. So this paper here is um, at 10.8 um, by 6.5 centimetres, just a little bit short of 11, just to put down on the base of the box. And this is then followed by our uh, top panel. So that's our top panel piece that goes up here on the top of the box. And that one there is 11 centimetres by 6 centimetres. We've got our piece of acetate, acetate uh, or window sheet. So this one here is 11 centimetres by 10 centimetres. There is our back panel piece. Um, this back panel piece is, um, again, probably, oh, I sh sorry, I should measure that. It is, yeah, just off the 11 centimetres again, so about 10.7. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's a, it's a square piece and I've done it at 10.7 uh, or 10.8 by about 10.8 10 just for our back panel. And then you'll need two uh, pieces of DSP which is uh, six centimeters by ten centimeters and these will then form our uh, side pieces all right so um, we are going to do some cutting because I'm going to show you how to cut and score the 12 by 12s so we'll just move our little box out of the way so again I'm going to show you how we're going to make this gorgeous box all right, so take one of your 12 by 12 pieces and cut that to 24.5 centimetres by 18 centimetres. And this will be your front box. Okay, so I can move this onto the video so that you can see. All right, so 24.5 You won't need that, so you can pop that away by 18. So I'm just using a bit of that one, looks a little bit warped, so cut that off. So 24.5 by 18 centimeters that's the first piece, that's going to be your front. That's the lift, the, the fold up front part. And we'll cut our other piece as well. So you need a 24 centimetre by 24 centimetre piece. So a square piece, 24 by 24. 
okay and those extra bits they can just go away as well all right we're going to still need our trimmer because we're going to do some scoring so make sure that your cutter blade is moved right out of the way and we just need our score so grab your base remember your base was the 24 centimeter by 24 centimeter piece and go ahead now and score six and 6.5 centimeters on all sides so 6.5 grab your scoring blade up and down and rotate 6.5 centimeters again up and down rotate again 6.5 up and down and one last rotation at 6.5 centimeters and last score now what you're going to do with this piece is grab your scissors and you're going to cut the top two corners so again, this is your base. And I want you to cut the top two corners. Cut them right off. You don't need them, so just get rid of them them into your scrap pile they're a nice little square shape could come in useful for something I know I'm a paper hoarder <laughs> and proud of it okay and the next thing that we need to do is to also make um, our tabs so we are going to cut up so up from the bottom Okay, and stop at that first score line. We're not going to cut these ones off. So just cut up the bottom till you get to the score line. And repeat on the other score line. Cut it up and stop. Okay. Um, now I do, I'm just going to put it to the side because, um, I don't want to keep bringing it back and forth, back and forth. So we'll just put that one to the side for now. And we're just going to go ahead with the top. So we're looking for the 18 centimeter side and we're going to score that 18 centimeter side at 6.5 centimeters. Okay. So. The 18 centimeter side is the one that we're going to line up at six and a half centimeters. And then we are going to score along the top there. Rotate and now score at your 18 centimeter line here move it down and score at six and a half centimeters okay now we're going to make two tabs so we're going to cut from the top to the score line And again, we're going to cut down the score line and stop at that very first score line. All right, now I should be able to move this trimmer out of the way now. I'll put our top that we just made to the side and I'll bring back the base. So here's our base piece. So we've got this shape going on here. Now you can probably already tell this is going to be your top. And this um, 
and this is going to be your, your box part. Okay, so what we need to do then is to adhere our base. So we're going to go ahead now with our bone folder. We're going to score all of these. Okay, and we're going to adhere the base. So if we have the tabs folding over in this way, then we've got a nice plain bottom. And on the inside there, if you remember, is where we're going to glue our base patterned paper piece. So that would go then down there. And that just makes that bottom piece really pretty really nice okay so to add here we are going to use the stamping steel plus stamp and seal plus just to give it a really nice secure bond So there's our bottom and we can adhere our piece of pattern paper straight into there. Um, I'll use my multi-purpose glue for this bit here. nicely on the inside there and while we're here I'm going to grab our back panel piece as well and we'll adhere that to our back panel What I love about the um, multi-purpose glue is you've just got that time just to manoeuvre it in inside the box. And your bone folder will help just to squeeze in here. Hold that down. Okay. Um, and so, yes. So that's our base. So we're going to sit the base now to the side and we're going to bring our top back in. I'm going to go ahead now and I'm just going to do those score lines. And I'll, and I'll also give you an idea of the kind of the construction of this box. Okay. Uh, so... These will fold down, that will fold over the top, and then we've got our hinge part. So what we need to do then is we need to look at these side pieces and we need to cut them uh, at an angle. So I will need to get my stamp and trimmer back in. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut from this corner to this corner. 
So the widest part is at the top to the narrowest part at the bottom of the box. Um, so we'll bring the stamping trimmer back in. And I'm just going to line up with the center of the um, channel on the trimmer. So from this point to this point here. When I'm happy with it, I'm going to cut. Okay, don't need that piece. And we're going to do the same thing. Remembering the widest part is from this top corner down to this bottom piece here. So lining it up. Making sure those points are in the channel, the center of the channel. And cutting up. Okay, so now we have got our angle cut there. What we would like to do now is to create the window. So I have been using the framed floret um, dies. I've got those beautiful ovals in there. So I'm going to be using uh, this oval here. Um, so we're just going to center it on there. Grab a little bit of washi tape. And when you're using washi tape for this one, just uh, glue, uh, sorry, glue, just adhere your die uh, with the washi tape. Um, adhering to the inside because if it does pull up um, a bit of card which it shouldn't but if it does then it's going to be on the piece that we're not using so I'm just going to happy with it it's centered there and happy with it centered there all right now tip so you'll notice that this is too wide to go through the stamp and cut and emboss machine. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to fold this over the top and then run it through. So it's, it is now uh, slim enough, skinny enough to go through the stamp and cut and emboss. So I'm just going to run that through now. So the impact that that had is that we have this at the top. And that's why we have got our piece of pattern paper that we then adhere all along the top. So I pulled out the wrong piece there. Okay, so that's why we have this piece that goes over the top and that covers up um, the mark that was made. So now we have got our window and we've got uh, a die and an oval. So we could use that on a different project. And so we're going to open this back up and we're going to put our window in. So again, we're going to bring out the stamp and, uh, yeah, stamp and seal plus. Um, and I'm going to... Okay, run the stamp and seal plus along the edge of the window sheet. This is why I've made it like a 10 centimeter by 11 centimeter. So you've got enough width to put your stamp and seal plus on so that it, you can't see it. All right, so we're on the inside of the box and we're just going to 
line it up and down it goes. Okay, so now that we've done our window, we're going to stamp just around the outside of our window frame. I am using the Easter Bunny set. So that's where our cute little bunny comes from and the Happy Easter. And around the box are going to be these gorgeous little eggs. There's a punch that comes with this um, set. You can purchase it as a bundle and that will do punch out this gorgeous little rabbit here. And I just love these little carrots and this little bird. So I, there's so much that you could do with this little set. All right, I'm going to be stamping tone on tone. So we're just going to go Old Olive. And... I probably should have stamped before putting the window on. Um, but anyway... We shall carry on and you could go ahead and put maybe a smaller there's a little butterfly you could put go ahead and put smaller um, items on there you could turn the stamp so I think we'll do that we'll just turn the stamp and stamp down there go I'm going to go ahead now and do the bottom as well. Okay, and this is where um, this is where it becomes problematic. Problematic having the window already stamped, so I'll just stand that little guy there and. What I might do, is I'm just going to stamp up the side, so we'll fold that one over and stamp up the side. Um, okay. I use the stamp and chamois a lot to clean my stamps these days. Just love it. So convenient. All right. So this is stamping done. And what I might do, or what I am going to do now, is just going to adhere uh, our box top and then we'll cover up that part there. So uh, again, we'll need our stamp and seal plus. And just do one at a time. So fold it down, fold it in, and then fold it over. Okay. And then same here. Oops, same here. Okay. And we will grab our piece of pattern DSP so this remember is the um, 
no, wasn't it 11? Was it 11? Yeah, 11 by 6. So it's your 11 by 6. We're going to use the multi purpose glue. And adhere that over the top. Okay, having a nice similar edge around each one. So the next part is to, to do these sides. So how do we do those sides? All right, so we get those two pieces that we cut earlier. Uh, which was the six centimeters by 10 centimeter pieces. And we're going to cut from one corner to this corner. So again, we're going to get our stamp and trimmer. Okay, we're going to go from one corner to the next. So make sure that the corners are in the center of the channel, the cutting channel. And run up. Okay. And do that again. Grab our box lid and we'll grab this piece here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to have a look and see which piece looks the best so that it actually doesn't look too bad there. We check this piece here. Okay, we can see that Okay, and the reason that we don't do uh, one piece and do two sides is uh, Because you'd have to flip it over. So that's why you've got to do the two pieces all right, so when you're happy, just grab your multi-purpose glue. And doing it this way means you've got a little bit of wiggle room just to balance it all out, top, sides, and bottom. Over this side so we need to remember to flip that second piece of uh, six centimeter by ten centimeter side piece we need to flip it and cut from corner to corner on the other side uh, otherwise you're going to end up with uh, four of these pieces okay so we're going to now glue um, or adhere the other side so we're just going to check our pieces to find which one's the best so and this is this is why we're checking because as you can see we've got this lovely uh, corner edge here but when I take my fingers off it goes from really thin down to a nice a nice gap so that one's not going to work so we'll give this one a go and hopefully this one will work much better Okay, so it is working um, a little bit better than the other one. Okay, so obviously my, my channel lining up wasn't wasn't too great. But you know what? I'm making it for my grandson. He's two. <laughs> so uh, he is not going to be worried about how the sides have been adhered. 
Uh, he's going to be more worried about that Bilby chocolate that's on the inside. <laughs> okay. So knowing that, I'm just going to go ahead now and adhere this piece as best as I can to the side of the box. And we'll go up a bit, across, right, yeah, and we'll just fiddle. You know what? And it's good enough. Good enough is good enough, right? All right, so we've now got our base and we have got our top flap. And this, obviously, is where the magic happens. So we're going to put some adhesive here. And then this is probably actually the best way to do it. So we're going to put some adhesive on here. And then I'm going to line the two boxes up together and I'm just going to lie it down inside there. And our lid is adhered. Okay, so looking at how to best to do this. So do I want an adhesive here or do I want an adhesive here? If I put adhesive there, it's much easier to put on. Get out our stamp and seal plus. Yes, I do talk to myself. Um, madness is a sign of creativity, right? Surely. <laughs> Okay, so I've gone for actually putting uh, adhesive onto this part of the lid because it was just so much easier being um, down on the mat already. There we go. Okay. So be really, really careful. Make sure you've got it exactly where you want it before you put that final piece down. So we're going to line it up. So you'll notice that, I hope you can see in there. I think you can. So you'll notice that the base box is slightly smaller than the top box. And that's just so that we can get the hinge lid happening. So we're looking at just kind of making sure that that gap is nice on even, even on either side. And then we're just going to push our lid down. There we go. Our completed box. I've got a gorgeous little scene down there. So, you know, right now, you're probably thinking of all the wonderful creative things that you could do with this. Like, I mean, diorama is the teacher in me. <laughs> diorama, anybody? Absolutely. How gorgeous would that be? All right, and then a flip, little flip lid. Okay, so what we want to do now is we want to just decorate the front. So, of course, I have already gone ahead and I've done that. So I've gotten this cute little bunny from that... Um, Easter Bunny set. I've coloured it with light smoky slate and a little bit of petal pink nose and ears right there and I've left a lot of it white. Also went ahead and I coloured the and cut out these eggs so we've got Highland Heather Soft Saffron um, and I'm pretty uh, oh, no Flamingo light and dark flamingo on that one and i stamped with uh so saffron the happy easter and i colored with oh i want to say light pumpkin pie and dark so saffron that's what i want to say and that's what I'm going to go with. <laughs> now, this little bunny, we're going to set him up before we glue him on. Uh, well, we're not going to glue him on, actually. We're going to um, mount him with dimensionals. But before we do that, we're going to add our Easter egg. So we are going to just glue with multi-purpose glue those eggs straight into Mr. Easter Bunny's arms. So we're just going to sit them. Oh, hello. 
just going to sit them just down here a little bit and shift it over. There we go, glued straight on. And I'm going to mini dimensional this Easter egg here. One, the one will do. Sticky fingers. Okay. And just uh, raise him up, 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 just a little bit in front of his arms there. So he's holding on to those um, Easter eggs. And I'm going to use the original stamp dimensionals to mount my Easter bunny. Although, sorry, just thinking about that, we will need mini dimensionals up here for the ears. So don't rush off just yet without them. So we'll grab the mini dimensional, we'll pop that onto his ear. And another one, pop it onto this ear here, just finding the widest bits. There we go. Okay, the rest can be the original dimensionals. Um, now, what I'd like to do, I um, just wasn't happy with how the uh, Happy Easter was on the last box. So, oopsies, I'll show you. So, on my last box, I had the happy and then the Easter down here. Now that actually happened because um, I'd put the Easter bunny on and then found out that the words just weren't fitting properly. So um, if I do that again, then I'm going to have the same situation because I guess, I guess what I'd like is I'd like, you know, happy and Easter to kind of be in line so I've got to figure out where I want my bunny and my happy and my Easter which I'm actually thinking are too too straight let's give it a bit of an angle never go wrong with an angle how about Easter going down the way oops And happy, nope, let's have an Easter going up the way. Don't like that corner, stick him under the foot there. And happy. Over here. All right. Oranges and lemons, really, isn't it? It's up to you. Up to you what you would like. I might actually end up going with the original box. <laughs> okay, so dimensionals. On to the back of my little bunny. You pack it. enough all right and we will mount our Easter bunny on the front of the box. Um, and as I said, I actually wanted to cover that little egg down the bottom there. But I want to cover the corner of this oval too. I think that actually looks much cuter if I do that. 
and yeah sorry ah oh, that's what I was thinking so that's actually coming off the box now doing happy there and then Easter there so go back to here um we are going to use dimensionals for happy Easter so I'll get that all set up You don't need to use this many dimensionals. This is just a really bad habit of mine. <laughs> oh. So we'll put the Easter bit down for bottom. We'll do it first. Um, and it looks like we are pretty much going with the original the first one that we did there we go like that at an angle okay and we'll dimensional am i am i off the camera for this bit <laughs> sorry um again popping those on there Okay, and now happy. Now, let's fill in the space. Why not? Okay. There we are. We have got two Easter Bilby front flap. Easter boxes. I'm sure by the time I post this, I'll have a title. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed crafting along with me today. It's been great.